G'day, this is Alistair Christie, and the title of this video is 100 IDE Hints and Tips. A little bit about me, I've been developing software for the real estate industry within New Zealand for about 10 years, and for the last couple of years I've been maintaining the CodeGearGuru.com uh, website, in which I make Delphi training videos and occasionally review a book. I felt I needed a new challenge, so I nominated myself to produce a couple of sessions for this event, CodeRage 3. Anyway, enough said, on with the show. Okay, the first couple of hints are a little bit lame, but what, what you can do is uh, drag and dock these windows. Um, now, unfortunately, uh, this version, I'm running version 3 of Camtasia, and it doesn't handle the alpha blending, um, which means that anything that's got transparency is completely invisible. So you can't actually see what I'm docking. The, my original hint counter uh, I made it transparent when the mouse wasn't over it, um, but it just dis disappeared completely. Um, so it was a bit useless. Um, anyway, first tint, dragging and docking. Um, you can also unpin windows. So I'm just going to unpin those two. And a little bit bigger. And we can save our desktop layout. Um, so if I go save current desktop and call this 1024 by 768. and we can go into the um, view menu desktops and delete, delete if we wanted to get rid of it but we don't um, you can also change your default debug layout um, so you can select a different layout um, and that can be quite handy if you like things arranged differently um, but we're not going to be doing a lot of debugging uh, hints in this so we don't need to worry about it um, we can add buttons to the toolbar now this is really cool um, customize and oh, from the run menu run without debugging and disabling so there's the we can turn it on, on and off exceptions I find this quite handy um, sometimes you have an exception in action or something like that um, which can be really hard to get out of and you can just disable the turn the, the exceptions off Um, there's also, if I go to Tools, Options, um, in the VCL Designer, um, there's the Component Captions, by default they're actually on. Um, I tend to go backwards and forwards by liking them on and off. I think um, I'd like them off for Forms and on for Data Modules, but that's not an option. And Auto Create, oops, Auto Create forms and data modules. Um, I generally turn that off. Uh, what that means is oh, it's component uh, captions, but um, if I create a new form added to the project and then have a look at project options, in the forms we'll see that um, form 2 hasn't been automatically created. Um, we can have automatically created, we can just adjust it to how we how, how we like it. Um, normally in larger projects um, I like to handle all the form creation manually um, rather than having everything just create on startup. Some forms can be quite complicated and take a while to generate, particularly there's a lot of data involved. Um, if I view the source we can see that um, form 2 is, I just delete that and now it's no longer automatically created. So if we go to Project Options Forms, it's now available again. Um, does that count as a hint? Oh, that's at least one hint there. The changing the settings on the tool palette. Um, my preference is just, I like the default settings, but um, I've noticed some people like to um, turn off the button captions and just have the buttons. Um, but that's not my preference. The default settings for me are fine. Uh, you also may notice that um, I don't have the default colors. Um, if we go into the properties here and have a look at color. Now by default the color is set to, well, default. Uh, well actually we want to look at the Delphi colors. 
Um, I actually prefer the classic colours. I'm a I started in Turbo Pascal 5.5, so I like the the blue background. Um, but I actually like things a little bit differently. Um, oops. Sort of anyway, cancel that. There's a few other things that I I have differently as well. Um, oh, I should also say in the options there's also uh, oh, what are we up to? Changing the tool palette colors and key mappings, which is what I'm about to, what I'm about to do. Um, so in key mappings, you can have a different key mapping if you're if you liked the Visual Studio layout for the keys. Um, but I like the defaults. Um, also, it's good to have the defaults because a lot of the hints I'll be showing later on involve um, certain key mappings. And also on the welcome page, finally, um, if I go close all, um, and we show recent projects. Um, if I used the Fishfax project a lot, I could add it to my favorites um, and manage favorites. And you can do all sorts of things with creating groups and stuff, um, but um, I'll just remove that from the fav favorites. Um, also, I'm just going to turn off these text labels. It'll save us a bit more space. Okay, that's my first set of hints, uh, and sort of the environment settings. Um, so next we'll take a look at the um, um, some stuff for editing code. Let's create a new VCL Forms application. And if I hold down um, Control Alt P, uh, it takes me to the tool palette, and I can start adding controls such as a a button, an edit, a panel, a the uh, speed button, for instance. Um, now, so that's Control Alt P. Now, uh, what's something that's really cool is you can go view as text, or I can go Alt F12 on the keyboard. And um, if I also wanted to put this edit edit box on the panel. Go Alt F12. Um, there's our edit, and it's now on the panel. Um, view, as te view as text is, is very, very powerful, and um, you can copy and paste code and all sorts of things like that. You can also lock your controls to prevent you from uh, trying to shift them around. Uh, it's a global setting rather than um, a perform thing, which would be quite handy. In fact, there's zero. No, for a moment there I thought there might be a lot of controls on the form, but there's not. Um, now, if I select the edit one and press escape, it takes me to the parent. Um, let's lock controls and select parent. Uh, that's quite handy if, if things are aligned to uh, aligned to client and you want to select the parent. It can be quite difficult to do that, so that's an easy way of doing that. Um, the other thing is in the structure view. Now the structure view is quite quite useful. Um, I can shift take the speed button off the panel and put it, put it back on the form and that kind of thing. So that's um, shifting things around using the structure view. Now, oops, if I let's just um, That's interesting. Let's put it over the button instead. Um, uh, go to the structure view, and um, we can select the button if it's hidden. So this is the easiest way to find it usually, or in the object inspector drop down. Um, and yeah, we could then um, bring it to front. Um, which is what I was wanting to show you. We can also align controls. Um, that's also quite handy. This is the old way of doing things before um, the VCL designer guidelines. Um, so let's put 
Um, let's align these three. Um, align left sides, for instance. Um, but these days, you just use the designer guidelines. And this is something I found out recently, which I wish I'd known years ago. Uh, in fact, I don't know how long it's been in, in Delphi, but um, if I want to go down to the name property of the button, I can scroll down and do it. But if I press tab, it takes me across to this side, and I can type in name, press tab again, and call it B. Um, and then I can go shift tab or tab again and go up to the, well, I can use this up and down arrows or just type in caption, it's now a smart button. And what I might do before we go on is I'll just go file, save as, Save all, I suppose. Okay, and let's let's look at some editing, some code editing. So let's generate some code. Now the first thing I'm going to show you in here is if I hold down the Alt key and drag, and if I just select a column, um, we can select that column of text and go delete. Selecting blocks is quite can be quite handy, um, but I, I don't use it very often. Occasionally it's, it's useful, but if you want to un undent a single character, um, it's quite quite clever for that. And speaking of uh, indenting, uh, Control shift u is unindent, and Control shift i is indent. Um, really, really handy. Um, so that's the Alt mouse and indent. Um, if I middle click with my mouse, I can scroll around my project. Um, now, um, now, if you if I want to double click on that, and I can use can um, just, just drag and drop and move the text around quite easily. Um, but what I can also do is I can hold down the control key, in fact I'll just grab a little bit more, and yeah, I'll go this side. So a really, really smart button. And I typically use this quite a lot when I've got a whole bunch of code in the clipboard and I want to shift some code around, um, and I don't want to disturb what's in the clipboard, so that's um, quite useful there. Now, we've got, uh, I think Delphi 2005 introduced code folding. Um, that's quite handy. Um, it's not overly exciting, but if I go, let's just put a couple of comments in there to prevent them from disappearing if we do a, a recompile. Um, in fact, I'll put it there. Useless code. And we now can collapse our code so we can create our own regions, which is, is quite handy, but I've hardly ever used it. I've used it a couple of times. Let's go into the speed button click and say which one dot Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is if I highlight this text and click on this button here, this enable sync edit, and what I can do is I can just go in 
and change the code and it changes it in both places. And if I hold out code and go control shift J, it does the same thing. So that's that's very powerful. Okay, surround. If I highlight some text and go right click and select surround, I can check um an if something like that. Um, so it's surround... Ah, oh, and related to, to code folding, if I hold if I hold down control shift and press KO it actually disables the code folding or enables it. You might find that useful, I don't know. But I get to count it as a hint anyway. Let's save that again and look at the history view and we can see um, if we're comparing the f if we uh, look at the, the difference we can compare um, what we originally saved with what's uh, in the in memory currently or we can go back to our, since we last saved it. Actually, going the other way, since we last saved it. So we just added, have added a, a comment. Um, that's quite powerful. If I go back to let's go design and add another button, we can actually look at the history of the DFM file as well. So we can see that we've added uh, a button since we last saved. Um, this can be really, really handy if you've accidentally shifted something slightly. Um, you can go back and manually change the, the numbers. Um, so that's the history view and viewing it on a DFM file. Uh, let's go back to our code. Now we can go delete line, that's control Y. Um, we can go control shift Y is delete the end of line. And um, the last little hint I'll, I'll show you in this section is um, the, well, you know, if I go control shift space, it brings up the, um, uh, I've forgotten what it's called now, code completion. Uh, window and we can resize it, which is it can be quite handy if you want to be able to see more. And that should actually take us to number 35. Oh, and the last one I've got here is Control K, Control K O. No, Control Control K T is select current word which is pretty much the same as double clicking on it. I think double clicking on it is probably easier to remember. Um, and that was number 36. I now have a whole bunch of things on code navigation. Um, the first one is, I'll go control F for find. Uh, there's also, um, if I go file new form, dot new form, Um, I can go control F, find and files. Um, so it's find and find and files, and we can see that these are all the various locations that, that form is referenced. Um, also there's incremental find, so I can go control E, and search for form and I can press F3 to find the next next instance. If I go control F and find in files again, now I can tick regular expressions and I can go find form uh, four or three. 
So we can see that it's found form 4 and form 3 in the various files. Okay, and oh, F3 for search again. Ah, find references. Um, if I right click on this and go find references, um, let's close that one. And it's a bit bigger. We can see that form 4 is referenced in these two files. Um, and the keyboard shortcut is Control Shift Enter. Okay, 42 fine references. Uh, search, find class. And we can find T speed button, for instance. Um, so we can find find classes within our project. That's quite handy as well. One, I can, there's these backwards and forwards buttons. So I can go back to the various places I've been previously in the history. So I'll drop that down as history. Go back to the welcome page, for instance. Um, that's where we were. And the shortcut keys for those are Alt left and right. Oops. And um, I've closed, I've re renamed that file since, so that's probably okay. It's 44, control click. If I hold down control and click on form 4, it takes me to the definition for form 4 and give the definition of forms. That's, that's control click. Control click, control up and down arrow. This allows you to scroll up and down without moving the cursor. You might not think that's overly um, useful, but if we go back to the form and add, I don't know, an, an action list and open that up, and then go back to the source code, um, rather than shifting this around, we can um, use the control up and down arrow to shift so we can move out of the way. That somewhat useful. Just control click, control up down. Control left and right has one word, backwards and forwards one word at a time. Not very exciting, but useful. Um, control home and control end to beginning and end of file. Um, bookmarks. I can set a bookmark here. You can set bookmarks by buying, holding down Control Shift and pressing a number. So I've set a bookmark one there, and if I come up here and set another one there, and I don't know, check another one there. So Control Shift number um, sets bookmark. Control number should go to bookmark. Um, obviously, it's only within the files. Control 3. Let's put marks. Alt G, go to line number. Uh, control Enter, it's open file at cursor. So if I come up to variants for in instance and press Control Enter, it opens the variants file. Um, control Shift up and down arrows goes in between the definition and implementation of the of your various um, methods. Uh, control tab and control shift tab. So control tab goes through windows and control shift tab goes through them in reverse. Um, if I middle click on a window it closes it. Control F4, Control F4 is close window, save changes no. Um, I can right click and go 
close all other pages. Oops. Oops, I clicked help. Uh, it's one thing I don't like about the new help. Um, it's, it's gotten a lot better, but it's quite slow to start up. Close all other tabs. Um, this is probably actually the first time it's been run in Delphi 2009 as well. Okay. Let's get rid of that. Okay, cancel. So 57... Oh, we can drag and drop them. So Drag and drop something around. 58, structure view. So I can go and double click on various things uh, to take me to the the various definitions and implementations and things. It's quite handy. Um, we can also use the model view. Um, um, let's move this out. Let's check that, that corner for now. Um, so normally it's on the project view, but if we go to the model view, um, unit four and and I can double click and go to the various um, bits and pieces there. So that's 59, number 60, uh, control F12 for view unit, control shift B for buffer list, or control alt F12. That drops down this little arrow thingy here and we can select the units from there, so it basically does that. 61. Ah, control, alt, home, and end. No, oops, let's shift control, control, alt, home. So this is the uh, first method, control, alt, home, and control, alt, end is the last method. And we can use control, alt, up and down arrows to go between the various um, various methods. So the two. S symbol browsing. Con uh, alt, up, down, left and right. I actually don't know what this does. Um, I won't count that because, well, I'll count it. 64. Um, I was meaning to look that up, but anyway. Um, shift mouse wheel. So let's move cursor up and down. Control mouse wheel is um, page up and page down, basically. Now we also, we did um, Control Shift K O uh, disable code folding, but there's also Control Shift K A E U T R P M C G N, um, and there's uh, other code folding keys for. Um, fold nearest and all sorts of things like that anyway. Won't go into that. And let's introduce an error and compile. Now let's check this back over there. Uh, if I go Alt F7 or F8, it scrolls between the various errors in the list. So ne next and previous error. Or you can just double click on them of course. Okay, and that is my section on code navigation. It's not as well uh, organized as the others, but anyway, we'll move on. The next section of hints I've got listed in front of me is um, for code generation. Now, um, one of the best things is uh, control space and code completion. So if I type an ed control space it gives me everything that I'd want to type beginning with ed that makes sense. So edit one dot text whatever. Yes control space um, sender dot whatever. Anyway that's code completion. Uh, there's also class completion. Oh actually um, Code completion works in lots of other places as well. So I can go 
oops, INI control space, and it gives me INI files as the only unit that's relevant or begins with INI. Um, if I go control space here, I can override um, I can override adjust size um, if I really wanted to. It saves me typing it out. Um, but yeah, anyway, on to class completion. Um, if I type in function and go control shift C on which is class completion on the keyboard, it automatically generates the uh, implementation section of my function. Actually, it it generates the bare bones of it. I still have to write some code. Um, now, property bar, and it, um, if I go Control Shift C on that, it generates me a, a setter and a um, private variable or a field. Um, property blah ring st uh, string read um, get blah set blah and if I go control shift C there it generates me the, the getter and setter um, which is all very handy so that was um, code completion and class completion. Um, macro recording. Um, let's find a few lines of code. There we go. Um, if I press um, Control Shift R, that begins a macro recording. So I'll go home slash slash home down arrow and press Control Shift R again. Um, I can now go Control Shift P to play back that that macro, and you can get quite sophisticated with the macros. You can also use these button, buttons down here for um, play, record, and stop. And of course, there's a much better way of commenting and uncommenting code. Um, let's to use Control Slash, and you can do it again on the lines. Um, to uncomment, and also it works on highlighted blocks. So that's control slash. Um, using templates. Templates are cool. If I type, type 4 and press space, it generates me the bones of a, a for loop. Um, and if I said dot count yeah something like that anyway um, and if I, I could also go for uh, B um, but pressing space doesn't work this time I have to press um, control J and it will generate the the uh, structure for me and also um, oh there's lots of them but if you press control J you get a list so if I want a 4 in reverse. Um, so that's templates. Now you can also edit your own templates. So if I go view templates, here is the um, the list of available templates for Delphi. Um, there's others for C++ and XML and what have you. Um, and I won't create one, but I'll edit this one. This is um, one I use a bit. Uh, and this basically, um, well, I'll show you. If I type FAN and press space, it generates me f for me free and nil. So um, I find that one quite handy. Um, I've had more time. I'd actually um, describe how to, to generate it, but um, yeah, we're in a rush. Uh, goods. Okay, if I have an interface, foolable, if I can spell, um, I can press Control Shift G to generate a 
globally unique identifier, which I used quite often with interfaces. Um, um, yeah, enough said. Uh, to do list. Uh, if I go Control Shift T, um, I can add a to do list item. Um, on form and there I have a um, to-do list item um, and oh, I'll just go view to-do list and I'll tick off that and that converts that from um, to-do to done um, so we'll be up to using templates, creating templates, goods, and to do. Um, the next thing I'm going to list is UML modeling. Now, um, I'll go file new unit, and uh, if you go to the model view, and I'll go to unit one, and I'll add a class. I'll call it foo, add another class, bar, and if I look back at my source code it's created for me foo and bar, I can add a a function on bar, and I go back to the UML diagram, it's there, I could add a, um, I don't know, a procedure and go back and there it is so this I can't let us list two hints I think um, and also if we go to the model view and I expand bar oops expand bar it's got a couple of procedures on it if I take yay and drag and drop it to foo it's shifted the yay from bar to foo um, and yeah, that's pretty powerful stuff. Um, I don't have time to go into it in detail. Um, you should investigate it more. It's really cool. Um, and that is the end of my hints here. We're now going to have a look at some debugging tips. So I'm just going to write a little bit of code. And so not very exciting code, but I'll run this. I'll oh, first I'll set a breakpoint, and then run it if it, the program is actually correct. And what I'm first going to show you is the watch list. We can. Um, drag and drop stuff to the watch, watch list, which is not overly exciting because I can just move the mouse over that and it tells me what it is. Um, the shortcut for that is Control F5. Um, but also we can drag and drop expressions. And so uh, not only um, object, you know, things we can look at, we can actually have an expression in there, a little bit of fragment of code, which is, is quite handy. Um, doesn't always work because um, it's not always an, a legal expression, but quite often you can change it. For instance, in this one, if I change it to a hard cast, uh, it then works. Uh, run to line, that's quite handy. If I move the cursor down here, and press F4, um, it runs until it hits that line. Uh, that's really, really handy if you've got a big um, for loop or something like that. It's a bit quicker than hitting a breakpoint, um, going run and then removing the breakpoint. Uh, the next couple of hints, um, 
I actually need to change project options and I'm just going to turn on um, using the debug DCUs, there it is and I'll run that again and um, it's got these three buttons here so we've got step over which takes you to the next line of code in the current procedure or function um, and trace into and trace into actually will um, go into the code that's in that line so um, we can then go through but it's not very exciting uh, I can then go uh, run until return to get me back Um, conditional breakpoints. If I right click on this breakpoint and go breakpoint properties and grab one that I did earlier, so we only stop if the edit one um, edit box contains hello. So run that and it now no longer uh, stops, but we change that to hello and it breaks because of the um, because of our breakpoint expression. There's lots of other stuff in there which is quite handy, um, but I won't go into that. Um, we can inspect things. If I go onto sender, I can go Alt F5 or go into debug inspect. So the inspector is quite quite handy. Um, this is not actually all that useful because sender, we know it's a speed button, so um, we can go do a typecast to a speed button and then we've got all the properties um, and we can also say um, turn off show inherited and then we get only the ones that are introduced by the speed button um, and we can also modify these things as well um, if I want to go and change the caption change it to yay which I played with earlier or you just want to find out what it is you can press the question mark enabled is currently true um, and if we now run that the speed button says yay um, the last little thing I want to show you is if I generate an exception um, T form and run that, we get an exception, we can break and what have you, um, but e exceptions can get really annoying so the hint earlier that we had was to have this button um, so we can turn off exceptions and now we only get the exception that the application generates and we don't get to debug it, which can be quite handy if you've got this try something except um, clauses and you don't want to actually see the exceptions. It's 89. We're now going to take a look at some refactorings. Um, probably the most common one you'll use is the rename. So if I uh, right click on it, edit one and go refactoring and rename and it's control shift E. I can call this E um, and it shows us the the changes it needs it needs to make, and those changes include um, changes to the VCL designer as well, which is quite powerful. So it's now changed it here, and if I go back to the form, we'll see it's now in my edit box there as well. Uh, you can also rename all sorts of things. Uh, let's make it my form if I could spell and if I compile that that still compiles and runs its uh, re rename is much much better than um, you know doing search and replace also next declare variable I 
I sign 42. I can go to I and go refactoring. Declare variable. And it works out that it's an integer. Or S is assigned 42 and control shift V. Um, and we can also, so that's the rename refactoring, declare variable. And there's also declare field. Declare field is control shift D. And we can make it protected. And if we scroll up here, we've now got a protected S. Uh, extract method. Um, we can, if I highlight this and go refactoring, it will um, work out that we need uh, work out a method, um, you know, the code for it. Um, but if we say, if I go i equals 42. that and go extract method, it will work out that we need and need the integer as well as the, the sender. Um, and I'll be called my extracted method. And there it is there. So that's that's very cool, very powerful. Um, a couple of times I wanted to use it and uh, it doesn't work if you've got a with statement, so uh, it's worth getting rid of any um, any with statements that you've got in your code just to be able to use extract method. Um, so it was declare field extract method extract resource string. So if I go onto that and go extract resource string, I've now got a a resource string um, of hello, which is um, more for localizing your application. So if you want the Japanese version or, or whatever, it um, helps there, not having um, string string literals. Oh, if I go file new unit, uh, type class, it can be my class, but I'll um, inherit it from string list, which we don't have in this unit. I can right click and go refactoring, find unit, and it knows that it's in classes, and it puts the classes unit there, if I, and if I put a um, So I can go find unit on that. And then it's in dialogues. And form four didn't find at all. It should have. Ah, oh, no, because I renamed it, of course. Um, refactoring find unit. And you'll notice that it defaulted to putting it in the implementation section rather than the uh, interface because um, we're using it in the imp implementation. Um, so that's that's very cool. Change parameters. Um, let's go to this one and go change parameters, control shift x and add add 
parameter. And show message. My message. Um, so, what are we up to? Extract resource string, find unit, and change parameters. So, we're now back to the form designer, and I just want one more hint. Um, at a list box. One more hint on the object inspector, and that's uh, drop down menus like this. You can press Alt down arrow to drop them down. Oh, that one's not very exciting. The aligned one is more interesting. So if you like your keyboard shortcuts. And items, if it's got an ellipsis button, you can also go Alt down arrow to open it up. So I was meaning to show you that one before, but forgot. Um, I can, let's add, add a new project. Now we can uh, rename in here, so I can call this my my project and my unit eight. And if we look at the unit eight's code, we know that it's it's changed in all the, all the appropriate places. So let's rename. Um, if I wanted unit eight in project two, I could just drag and drop it. And if um, project two depended in some way on project my project, um, I can go in here and have a look at the dependencies. We can say it depends on my project. So now, um, if I check a button on there and compile. Project 2, you may have briefly noticed that um, it, it compiled pro my project first. And the very last hint that I'll show you is pressing F1. Um, it now works. Well, it's much better than it was. Um, so make make good, good use of the help. Um, and that's it. Uh, 100 hints. We went a little over time. Sorry, but that's life. Regardless, 100 IDE hints and tips. Some simple, some esoteric but I hope everyone could take something away. I certainly learned a few new things uh, during my research.